The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Media Mash, a roundtable of Cowboys insiders dropping wisdom and offering sizzling takes on the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. All right, Media Mash, let's ride. We've got the insiders in here today. We've got Clarence Hill, the OG, Fort Worth Star Telegram in the house. How you doing, Louis? Hey, baby, good to see you. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. we got the trivia for you today. Yes, sir. It's We're good. bringing it. Come it's on now. good, Come on now. okay? Stump me to die. I'm yeah. listening to the show. I'm like, that's good. we got to bring that to the media match. And we have the columnist, the author, the podcaster, Mr. Everything, Mr. Media, and the president of the JJT Media Group. He is Jacques Taylor. What's up, Doug? My man, it's good to see you. Good to see you. All right. I, I went and worked out today. Good for you. Decided to go catch a little nap. Next thing you know, her phone is buzzing. Oh, Mike McCarthy, what? <laughs> at least you got to sleep. He wasn't. <laughs> he got to what? I said at least he got to sleep. So, Mike McCarthy wasn't. All right, so Mike McCarthy needs needs appendectomy surgery. He's gonna have it later on today. Um, Nick. Take us through this all, you know. Yeah, it was uh, about 30 minutes before the press conference. Was uh, we were expecting McCarthy to go up, and I was about to, actually about to make my way to the press conference room, and we got a we got the message that uh, yeah, Mike McCarthy is dealing with acute appendicitis. Had some stomach pain this morning. Came into the facility, tried to kind of tough it out, and he's like, yeah, something's not right. Talked to the doctors here, and they're like, why don't you go get evaluated at the hospital? Turned out to be appendicitis. He'll have surgery this afternoon. Should be in the middle of surgery right now, actually, and then uh, he should be released later today. Um, expected to coach on Sunday, and everyone around the building is under the impression that he will be in the building on Sunday. Um, they have uh, they had Dan Quinn go in his place at the press conference yesterday. They'll have Brian Schottenheimer in his place tomorrow. So that leads me to believe that they're going to keep him out tomorrow, and he'll probably be back at the facility on Friday for the walkthrough. All right, so Nick, um, Clarence and Jacques have been covering this team since you were about four years old. So uh, it's probably uh, before, he was before that. It was probably before that, honestly. When were you born? 2000. Yeah, yeah, way before Come you were born. Come on, man. <laughs> Just a dirty he, thought. He, 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 no, he wasn't even. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, okay. So uh, my parents probably didn't even meet. <laughs> at 96, yo, where were you? Yeah, they, uh, 98. Yeah, they met 98. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, you right. My gosh. Okay, so uh, rank this in the the cowboy. All of a sudden, boom! You get the this the low, message this alert. Is on the, this is low on the totem pole. Okay, we've had major issues. I mean, the, I mean, and the only reason I say that is because. It's a shocker today because your head coach is missing, but but it's not like he got arrested for carrying a gun. Yeah, the airport. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not. I mean, I forgot. I mean, back in the before you was born. We go way. We go. Is that trivia today? Who was that? We go way back. I mean, we go to Michael Irvin cut the teammate's neck and wear yeah. gun. I mean, come on, man. Stop. Irvin McIver for East. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we go way back. This is a, but just a window into today though. Uh, you know, Mike comes in, Dan Quinn meets him, they come in together, I'm probably four thirty, five, five this morning or something like that, and he's not feeling well. He tries to tough it out. As as you I'll just you know, Pittsburgh as we do. Guy. So it's a stomach yeah, I'm, I'm hyper. It's a stomach injury, uh, stomach <laughs> pain. I'm gonna tough it out to see, but it, it got so bad and so unbearable that he went to see the doctor and 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 obviously that that's the way it went once he went to see Jim Meyer, because he's walking out with Jim because he talked to Dak and said, Dak say when he showed up, he saw him walking to with Jim Maurer. So he was, and still they didn't know what it was, but they knew there was something going on and he thought it was going to be back then. Talking to Jordan Lewis, um, number one, um, certainly Dan Quinn spoke to me today and Shot Number's going to speak to me tomorrow, but it was Bones Fossil who was talking at the team meeting and was really leading the team. And, and talking to Jordan Lewis, said, you know, it was Bones who kind of told everybody, Michael's, you know, Mike's not going to be here. And, and Jordan said it was like, it was a downer. You know, you got everything coming in this week, and you walk in, and you see your coach not there. And it, the initial news was a downer, you know, and it was it was a, a, a blow, a shot to the gut that, that something's going on with your coach until they found out later that, hey, it's just this, and he should be back. But it was, it was a downer, you know, early on for the team and, and just a disappointment that this was going to happen. And certainly once they got information, they found out, hey, it's appendicitis, and we're going to get it fixed, and he should be ready for the game. That's their mindset. He should be ready for the game, but yeah, that's that's a blow. I mean, you, everything after Sunday, you get ready. This big week is your first big practice day, uh, showdown against the Eagles, and you walk in and coaching nowhere around. 
So go win one for the coach. I mean, he'll be back Sunday. But that seems wild. Well, you, yeah, you I hope mean, so. I mean, I let's mean, see what the surgery said. I was going to say, but it seems just wild that you could go have your appendix, appendix removed and then you'd be on the sideline coaching Sunday. Uh, but, I mean, it's the Eagles. As Dak said, we'll see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just seems wild to me. But, I mean, I think um, the, it's a big deal because he's the play caller. If it was last year and, he, and he's just managing the game, yeah, you missed that, but it's, it, he's the play caller. Right. And, uh, you know, he calls the game a certain way. I'm not talking about plays. I'm talking about in terms of aggressiveness. Right. And, you know, you have to wonder if Schottenheimer does it and he's doing it, is he going to be the same kind of aggressive? Because this is the game of the year. Because if you lose this one, you know, you can start lying to yourself about the division and anything else. Yeah, and, 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 and you brought up a great point about him being the play caller because in 2020, during the COVID year, he missed the game for COVID. Right. And Dan Quinn stepped in as head coach, but again, he was the overseas right. head coach. Um, uh, because your boy Kellen Moore calling plays. Kellen Moore calling plays. Dan was calling defense, and, and so you had a different situation there this time because he's a play caller. And he's always saying, if you call it, if you install it, you got to call it. If you call it, you install it. Whatever word it is, he needs. He's really a big part of that. They're talking to Dak today because they talked to us at the locker, which is why Dak is so great because his day to talk is tomorrow. But he spent a good while talking to us about the whole situation today. They said, well, actually, they, they installed the game plan yesterday. You know, and they, they installed everything in yesterday. And certainly, they have their Zoom calls and things about particular things that they like that they will continue to go on third down red zone packages today and tomorrow. But pretty much, the game plan has already been installed. So. Who, so who's gonna be the Sharon Moore? Man, see, I was gonna leave that alone. I think I'll that be Dan would Quinn. be Dan Quinn. Yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be. He, he won't be crying. We did it for you, coach. I love you. We did it for you. I love that guy. We got that guy. for you. Did it for you, man. Y'all gotta drop some f bombs in there while you do it, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah. no, nah, it's it, it, it's 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 crazy, you know, because Cheating you you know you, you're talking about a team that is. Everything was going in the right direction. They're healthy. They had a 10-day layoff. They're riding the wind streak. They're playing great football. The Eagles are tired. They've been beat up. You know, they get the Cowboys have more rest than the Eagles. And so they were feeling good. They're certainly still feeling good. I'm not saying that. But then you come in, and it's a, it's a blow to, to, to momentum. Because that's what Jordan, we had this momentum going, and this is a initial. It's initially a mental setback. Yeah, and who knows, though, if he walks back in that facility on Friday and Saturday. Oh, that'd be and, hype. Yeah, it'll probably give a nice little boost before the game on Sunday. So. You know, it's a long week. So talk to Danny McCray and on the players' lines. He he's gone through the surgery. He said Mike will be fine to go on Sunday. He said just having gone through the surgery, so he's he expecting to be a. How old is Danny McCray? No, I'm serious. He's not he just, in the 60s. Like Kenny. Right. He's in his 60s. Danny McCray just came from Survivor. And nor is he you know, the in, in the, the best room. shape of his life. Maybe but <laughs> Huh? No, is he bit like an elephant. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> We're going to talk about that right now? <laughs> he did. He just brought he it up. He, but you got to put it in the right context. What context should it be put in? Go ahead. So. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> we got to check him here. Go so ahead. after the game. <laughs> what, 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 you, just go, we, you just No, after the game, you know, there's so much talk about yeah, Dak. That's when you said it, after the game. Right. right. There's so much talk about Dak in the offense. Okay. And I think it was two weeks ago. I don't think it was last week. But there was so much, talk about, Washington. so much talk about Dak in the offense. <laughs> Uh, and how well they're playing and how well they're going in the zone. And, and no one really giving Mike his due, his proper credit for what he's done and how he's calling plays because Mike's in the zone as a play caller. A lot of those plays that Dak's throwing, guys are wide open, and that has a lot to do with the play. A lot of runs, guys are open runs. And so I asked Mike after watching the game, I said, you know, you know, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And he said, elephant? What elephant? I said, you. You the elephant. <laughs> he said, oh, 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 I put oh, on a little weight. I, but, I, yeah. It's a stressful job. I'm to put on a little weight. I said, <laughs> Coach, I'm really talking about giving you credit for – because Nash, let's let's be honest about it. Let's let's talk about it all. The narratives coming out of Green Bay, how Aaron Rodgers would not listen to him, how his offense was stale. There's a lot of questions early in the season about Mike's running this archaic offense. You know, Mike took a lot, you know, his offense and his style, his offensive philosophy, fire Kellen. There was a lot of talk about Mike not knowing what he was doing, his offense being archaic. And now that the raw offense is rolling, nobody was saying, hey, Mike may be doing something right here. Yeah. And so that's what I, that's the point I was making. Oh, and, we talk, and I talked to Mike about it. He said, I know what you mean. On the players' lounge. On the players' lounge. I'd long since. I was, I was for the uh, move, going moving on from Kellen Moore and giving it to Mike McCarthy. I, I kind of go back to you guys when we covered Wade Phillips. Um, when Wade first got here, he didn't call the defense. He had Brian Stewart do it. And then Jerry eventually was like, hey, man, I hired you to do this. You do this. This is what you're supposed to do. And why would you bring in Mike McCarthy – 
a guy who's won a Super Bowl to not call the plays. If you hire Sean Payton to come in here, you'd want Sean Payton to call the play. Because this is unlike, un, unlike that situation, Jerry made them keep killing him. Come on, let's not act like we don't know why. And, and, <laughs> you yes. think Mike really didn't want to call play when he got here? Yes. Okay, and, and, that, and, that, and that, that, that is what I've also said, too. Okay. That this man has not told us the truth. That I had to say, yes, you can have Kellen Moore to keep this job the way yeah, Wade it. said, yes, I'm I okay Jason with Jason here. <laughs> Tell the truth. To go I ahead and call the plays. Well, truth. North Turner was like, Jason ain't calling no plays. And Jerry's like, Mike, you're not going to be my answer. Mike said it was Green Bay would never give up play calling again. You yeah. spent that whole year in that dungeon, I mean that barn, you know, dissecting. <laughs> oh, man. To let somebody else call the place. <laughs> to let somebody call place a dungeon. I'm just saying. Whatever it is, it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, spent all them years of the, to not call the place? Come on, man. In the frozen tundra? Come on. <laughs> like, like Dr. Dre up there, man, in the lab, man, getting it all done. In this the is, lab, yeah, the lab. This is 2001. The dungeon lab. Right he was like Hold Frankenstein's up. monster I'm creating. <laughs> You know Frankenstein. You know, you know Frankenstein. Yeah, do, do. You don't know about that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so, so Mike, Mike is, and, and I agree. With you. So, so I ask this question on the players. Now, I ask you guys: this. Is Mike McCarthy an elite coach? His record would suggest that he is, but uh, he got a Super Bowl ring. But uh, why are you saying but then? Because I don't know that he's an elite coach. I think he's a really good coach. Yes or no? Can I, I'm pondering. I didn't know this was the question, man. <laughs> well, I would, I would it, say uh, Bill Belichick elite coach. Yeah. Think about it. Sean uh, Payton, the lead coach. Yeah. Nick, I'd put him no. in tier two. I'd put him just in the same tier that I feel the Cowboys are this season when you talk it about elite, elite teams. Or not? Oh. It, no, it's not an elite. It's nope. not an it's elite not team. Elite. Oh. elite is number one, I feel like. It's, it's top tier. No, 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 no. So you're saying the Cowboys are not an elite team this year? No. I'm saying they're in tier two. No. I think they're at the top of tier two. Until they can beat the Eagles or the 49ers, they are at the top of tier two. No, they're not an elite team just yet. I, what? I'm not talking about team. He's I know. I was just elite giving it a comparison. Head coach, giving it a comparison. In your opinion, yeah. he's an elite head coach. Yeah, he's probably top five, but I don't feel like he's one well, of the top, top two, five, top, top five would but, make but, him but an elite coach. Ain't that what I'm trying to say? I mean, y'all, y'all killing take, me. I'm trying to take think. That. Now, see, my, my, I'm, my, I'm not my, get my issue with the, the question is, is it elite all time? Is elite right now? Right now. That's what I took it as. When you go look down and you says elite head coaches, is he an elite head coach? All time? No, because he ain't going in the Hall of Fame right now, and that's where the elite coaches go. Okay. Um, and that don't make him a bad coach. He's in the Hall of really, I, I get, really good. I don't think he gets enough credit for how good a coach he is. I think that. Now, he get another Super Bowl ring. Uh, so this, this, is, this is good. This is I don't good. think he gets enough credit. And, 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 and listen, I've <coughs> come to respect him more and more because of how he's handled this team. Like I said, I, I we talked about it before. 12 and 5, 12 and 5 the last two years. No coach has won more games than Mike McCarthy the last two and a half years, except Andy Reid. Uh, to, to go 12 and 5 last year without your quarterback, he don't get enough credit. I don't, I don't care what he did in the playoffs. To go 12 and 5, you know, go 4 and 1 with your backup quarterback. Look at look around the league when teams lose their starting quarterback. Look at the record. Look how they those teams fall apart. And the Cowboys went 12 and 5. Uh, again, he doesn't get enough credit for what he's done. And there's so much. Love for for uh, Sean Payton and he and Mike McCarthy are the same record. Is Sean Payton an elite head coach? Yeah. No, because he's not going to the Hall of Fame. Is no. he? He's not an elite coach. All right. I mean, I think people look at him that way. I mean, people look at Sean Payton as a league head coach. They don't look at Mike the same way. And, and, and which is my point. I think he's a very good head coach. Lead is Hall of Fame. I don't. Right. He's done That's, nothing to be in Hall of Fame. But in this league right now, he's one of your better coaches in the league. And, right. and, and everybody's, you know, you know, the Sean McVay's, all these these young coaches who get called geniuses and, and, and all this other stuff, and Mike does not get that. It was, and that's the thing that what, what frustrated me with all this Kellen Moore talk. Do y'all really think Kellen Moore was a better offensive play caller, better offensive genius, better offensive mind than Mike McCarthy in his, in his track record of being a, 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 a that guy in New Orleans and everywhere he's gone? That's crazy to me. All right, it's Pete Carroll, Lee. I wouldn't say so. He's been to multiple Super Bowls. I was going to say, Pete Carroll is more elite than Mike McCarthy. He was, yeah. and he would, and it'd be a no-brainer if he would have handed the ball off to Marshall on Lynch. <laughs> all right, Mike Tomlin. Uh, again, I, I just look at one ring there. Uh, and with all the talent that he's had throughout the years, I think he's a phenomenal coach. I don't think he's elite. I think really the only two elite coaches that you have in the NFL – Andy Reid and, and Bill Belichick starting to fall off, obviously. But I mean, just given his track record, <laughs> there's right? no you longer have, elite. You got to fell off. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! So, so, so I, this is what I got a problem with. I, I, I got I got to go back to this. Why are the Cowboys not the elite team right now? Because who's they playing been... better football than the Cowboys? Right? Who's played better football over the last seven weeks than the Dallas Cowboys? 
I'd put the Niners in that conversation. Okay. Yeah. That's two teams then. Give me. Yeah. So, I mean, your lead only has one person. Sometimes. So, the Chiefs are not elite. Sometimes it's Baltimore two teams. The Chiefs I mean, are not elite right okay, now. Okay, that's my point. So, why does why does the lead only mean because one team? Because they ain't beat nobody, dog. Quit they haven't. Uh, they got a chance to answer all the questions. Just, I agree, this but week. my point is, who's play? Who's beat it anybody? But, the, but 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 San Francisco. But, San, but my point is, who's played better football? Y'all watch the game. Why? Is, uh, who's playing? What offense is playing better than the Cowboys right now? What offense is playing better than the Cowboys right now? I mean, yeah, the Dolphins have looked good throughout the year, but they kind of have the same problem that the Cowboys have and the fact that they haven't really beaten anybody. Right. They, so. we, we, they don't only, have to be elite right now. They can be elite after no, Sunday. No, I, I agree, but you don't. You only, you only, you only, you only play who they put on your schedule, right? And they've New done league? a great job of that. But I, to get to the top of the chart, man, and be the tier two of Super the Cowboys Bowl favorite, the, so what, I guess, they but, should beat the Eagles this week. Exactly. Okay, Just so, like the Eagles so, should have beat so, the Magic Crib. So when the Cowboys beat the Eagles this week, are they elite? Uh, Yeah. Sports is fluid, dog. It matters who you beat and it matters who you win. I don't think they need to beat the Eagles this week. Okay, so so if they lose, they're going to beat the Eagles this week. But if they they lose to the Eagles, you're going to say they're elite. You think they're going to beat the Eagles this week? I do. I think it's going to be You think they're going to beat the Eagles this week? And you think they're going to beat the Eagles this week? But ask me why I think they're going to beat the Eagles this week. Because they're elite team? No, because they got all the advantages. Because Jalen Hurts can't read defense. Because Marcus Mariota should be And he's not a god, and he wouldn't be a god in Philadelphia. I just want to let you know. I think Mike McCarthy is elite. <laughs> I think that John Harbaugh, Sean Payton, Carroll, Tomlin, I think they're all elite as well. Um, all of them have won a Super Bowl, which is something that's hard to do in this league. McCarthy's what, 18th all-time in wins in the National Football League. Um, believe it or not, he's got more wins than Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh. I got more wins than Mike, Mike Tomlin, I mean, uh, than um, uh, Tony Dungy and, and Bill Cowher. He, he, to me, he's an elite coach. And, and when you talk about Hall of Fame, obviously Andy and, and Belichick will be there. Uh, I think Mike Tomlin is going to end up in the Hall of Fame. I, I do. Um, but, yes, I, I think he's elite. To do what he's done at two different franchises, I mean, we're, I, we're, all, we're all going to assume they'll win 10 games this year, correct? Yeah. yeah. When's the last time they had three 10-win seasons? We gotta the go 90s. Back, right. We got to go back to dudes who won Super Bowls. Even though Barry Switzer won with Jimmy's play, the guy's got one. Um, that's what we're talking about here. And, and to me, that is elite uh, in this league. And, you know, and the Hall of Fame, I think Mike is definitely, when we, I look at who's getting in here now, I mean, Dick Vermeil got in. When you start looking at Mike McCarthy, what he's done in this league, and you look at Dick Vermeil, yeah. Yeah, he's he's got a resume worthy of getting in. And, 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 and listen, we've been talking about Dak. I mean, if, if Dak continues this streak, and, and playing like he is, and if he be, wins MVP, how does Mike not get some credit for that? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. he'll get some credit for it. And, and how does that not add to his own resume of Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Montana, Aaron Brooks? Can't Y'all forget Aaron he Brooks down in New Orleans. Don't, yeah, you can give him Aaron Brooks, don't give him no Montana. Don't. He was. He was. He still. I coach. I coach Joe Montana. Oh, let me tell you. I coach Joe Montana. I, when I, when I, I was a quality coach. Control. Control. When I, coach when I, I'll tell you what. When <laughs> I coordination down on the paper. I coached. I coach. I mean, I worked at USC, and Paul Hackett was the coach. And he would always. Roll, I coach Montana. I was like. Damn it. He won two Super Bowls by the time you showed him. What'd you tell him? Set your feet, Joe. Yeah. Like, yeah. What did you do? What did you do? Like, my gosh. <laughs> we know who coached Joe Montana. And that guy, then, like, then of course, went out there and had the sorriest rack of quarterbacks we've seen. Like, my gosh, the quarterback position was terrible. Uh, but, anyway, he I worked know, with him, man. He I, worked with him, yeah. man. Come on. Hey, man, you just told you. <laughs> he won that coffee. <laughs> but I mean, no, seriously. Joe, what, set your feet, Joe. But, 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 Joe, but, Joe, but, set, set, but what Dak is doing, the offense, where they're going right now, how does Mike not get some of this? He should. He, yeah, should. he should. Because there was a whole lot of people out there talking about Kellen Moore was done dirty and watching Kellen Moore's going to do with Justin Herbert. They're about to set it up. Uh, Kellen Moore may be at work. Oh, he's going to be he's, next he's coach. coach I, heard, I heard he's going to be the coach of Carolina. And he may, he may be the interim head coach before the season. If Kellen will become the head coach in, in Charlotte, I, I may tell you, man. I, uh, he's not for long. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. It wouldn't surprise me with that management group, what they've done. No, Tepper, Tepper will not do Gosh. that. Somebody will save David Tepper before he hires You would hope Kellen so. Moore. You would hope someone, so. Someone has got to stand up and finally say something to the hedge fund guy. Yeah. You know, fire me if you want to, but you can't hire him. He's a play <laughs> caller. He's not a head coach. It's two different things. Uh, let's get our first break in here. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Uh, can he read defenses? Derek ah. Carr says he cannot. Let's dive into that next right here on the Media Mash on DallasCowboys.com. 
Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back, back to back, Media back. Mash. Media Mash. We continue with our Cowboy Insiders. we got Clarence Hill, Fort Worth Star Telegram, Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com, and we've got Jacques Taylor. He's got a book out. He wrote about Coach Prime. It's an excellent Christmas gift. All right? All right. Appreciate it. Okay, make sure we go ahead and support a brother. Support a brother this Christmas holiday. See, people still need to read books. Yeah, they do. Put your phone down. Read a book. Yeah. The Hill 2021 Family Christmas sweatshirt. Can I get a 2023 hoodie? Yeah. yeah, We're working on it. My sister's working on those. I appreciate that. I'll wear it. You know, my sister's working on those. All right. Good job. What were they called? You know, she's into the The family family hoodie and pajamas on Christmas. We had a really fight last year because she tried to give me what's red. You know, I don't wear red. But you get, but red. But What's that about? Red. No, my shirt What's is that white. About? It's red. It's red in there. It's right. But she's trying to give me some red. red. Huh? It's not. It's not a the primary. Color. I don't do. I don't do it's primary base red color. color. No, I don't uh, want that. Okay. You know, because we had a big primary, fight over that. The primary color is purple, Nick. I get, I get it. I'm I don't scared. do red. Okay, I, don't, I don't do that. Kappa colors. I don't do that. It's a kappa thing. One made a little red, made it look good. I ain't never. I ain't never wore red in my life, even before I was a bro. No, it was good. Don't worry. That's what you were made for. You're born to be. I was born to be a cute. You're born to yeah, be. he was. I had that dog in him. I always had that. So dog. I, I don't. We had a huge fight. But anyway, my sister's <laughs> doing all of this stuff, and so we got, we got, we got hoodies. We got, we got, we got hoodies and yeah. pajamas. You know, family thing. You ever see anybody around Schulenberg with red on? You just, you give them a stink eye. A little yeah, bit. You know, which orange and black, orange and black <laughs> yeah, attack at Schulenberg. You, you know, <laughs> I went from orange and Schulenberg to orange and Austin. So, so, so that's, that's a primary color of my life too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. can we move it on? Now? Okay, yeah. grew, up, grew up on <laughs> black. <laughs> 10 11 Black Street in Schulenberg. Oh, I like that. All right, got your Cowboy tickets? Fight, fight, fight. Yeah. Ain't nobody playing in the game. Okay. Mizzou. You trying to be funny with me? I'm just asking, man. You got him. You got I'm, I'm going. You going to oh, be there? No. You we don't go to spring games. Why are you going to the Cotton Bowl? We ain't going to spring games. I love we the go, Cotton Bowl. We like Why to. are you going to the Cotton Bowl? I love the Cotton Bowl. Support my boy Looper. Curtis Coach Looper. Looper. Oh, Looper. I didn't hear what you were talking about. Yeah, Looper. That's my dog. Yeah, yeah I like Looper. He, yeah, he, he found him a little running back at Truman State. Yeah, he turned man. him into like a star. Luke, man, man wow. Enjoy. that That's a story. I enjoy it, man. I enjoy I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy the Cotton Bowl. I do. I do. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm I'm a, a fan I enjoy the Cotton Bowl parties leading up to the game. Yeah, I'm like I, trying to go everything. and deal with the Cotton Bowl. Why is it so early this year? That's crazy to me. The 29th. It, well, when it's um, – when it's done the rotation. They got I move understand it. that, but you know, still, the 29th is early for the Cotton Bowl. So I was because you Year's caught Day up in game. tradition. Well, there are other games on. There's other games on New Year's Day that are not the uh, college football playoff games. There are other bowl games on that day. I'm just trying to figure out why the Cotton Bowl got kicked 
like it's the Alamo Bowl on December 29th. That's, that's, to me, it's disappointing. I'm sorry. I grew up with Cotton Bowl being a big part of my life growing right. up in Texas all my life, and it first, got kicked to the day of the, the you know, Alamo Bowl night. Man. First Cotton Bowl I went to, Ohio State beat uh, them Aggies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the matchup is maybe it's the matchup. I don't know. No, the date was already set for I know the matchup. The was already set, but maybe they already knew the matchup. It wasn't going to be a, going to be a yeah. playoff game. Who wants to go see Missouri? Again, there are other playoff games. There are other bowl games on January 1st not named, you know, not named CFP. Are you taking shots? I'm just asking the question. No, asking. seriously, I'm, I'm not caring about the Cotton Bowl, too, because, you know, being from Texas, it's, it's been the biggest bowl game in yeah. the state all our lives. Oh, yeah. I put in for those uh, college football playoff uh, credentials, so down get, in Houston for the national get, championship. Get the extra game. one for me. <laughs> Give me a date of birth and all that. And I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. You come right for me. I will. I'll write some online. Yes, sir. I yes, sir. Um, David Carr said on NFL Network that Jalen Hurts can't read defenses. Obviously, he Jaylen can't read Hurts. defenses. Get the quote right now. <laughs> Obviously, he can't read defenses. <laughs> Man took him to a Super Bowl, couldn't read the defense, right? Just just magically caught him with the best record in the league, can't read defenses. And he said they should sit him for Marcus Mariota to rest Jalen Hurts for Marcus the Marcus Mariota, who ain't started since 2019. And he started something he last started year. Last year for the yeah, remember that, I'm talking that, that about as a full time start. I mean, he was their guy, and then. Until he got benched. Yes, then it, then it happened. So, Like yeah. I said. So I, I, uh, I, I saw it, and um, yeah. I, I saw it. I watched the clip several times, and I could not believe what I was actually hearing on NFL.com. I mean, NFL Network. NFL Network. Uh, NFL Network. Not, not you know, one, the FS1s so yeah. where we got to say something crazy because nobody watched. This is a respected network. Here's a former player, former quarterback to come out and say something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that's bad. And two, is he talking about Hurts or should he be talking about his brother? Because <laughs> his brother I mean, got problems. It, it, it's crazy to me. And, and again, we, we've talked all year about the stuff Dak gets, right, wrong, and different, fair, unfair, and all the all the criticism. And, and just going back, let's pull back. Sunday, there's a story in the Philadelphia Inquirer. A guy writes a column before the game that Jalen Hurts, by all accounts, on the field, off the field, hard worker, got benched at Alabama, did not get down, supported his teammates, won that championship, went to Oklahoma. They love him. Hard worker, guy, role model. You can't find hill. nobody to say anything bad about him. Nobody said he's Mr. Perfect. It kills and me. Kills and <laughs> all of this, and again, and also make a sci-fi. But a guy, a columnist in Philadelphia writes, Brock Purdy would be a god in Philadelphia because he fits what Philadelphia is. He fits our ideal because he he's a, a, a he's underachiever, Rocky. overachiever, and he's like Rocky and all stuff. He didn't mention Jalen Hurts, but that's a sm slap in the face to Jalen Hurts and everything he's done. You know, you get that, you know, and then you get this guy saying Jalen Hurts can't read defenses. It, 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 it was It's just crazy to me. All this is crazy to me that we're talking about this, talking like this. You know, the veiled innuendos about Jalen Hurts and the type of quarterback he is. The racial undertones. All of that. It, it, it's it's it, unnecessary. It. But I, I am surprised that Philadelphia gets so excited about and they, they're in love with a fictional character. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. Right. Got a statue of him. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, not like they've never had a real prize fighter or heavyweight champion for the city, but, but like, they're in love with this <laughs> fictional character. And uh, But Philly, I mean, this is the same group that booed Donovan McNabb on draft day. They wanted Ricky Williams, and they booed Donovan McNabb, who also took them to, to a Super Bowl. So uh, I'm not surprised that you have – but I'm not talking. About, I think the fan base loves him. I mean, it's it's, it's just it's, there's this undercurrent of media, whatever else that that, that has the attitude that that that's disrespectful to Jay Hurts and what he's done. Um, except I'm not surprised in that town. I remembered when they used to do a lot of different shows on NBC Sports Philadelphia. They'd always had me on um, to preview training camp um, and then the Cowboy Eagle matchups. And this is when. Carson Wentz was there, and it was always this Dak versus Carson Wentz thing, and, and them wanting me to say that Carson Wentz was better, da, da, da. I'm like, guys, do you realize you keep asking me about the Cowboys' second, fourth-round pick compared to a dude you traded a boatload of picks for to trade up 
to take number two overall. Yeah. Like, you realize what you're doing, right? You're trying to, you, you have this inferiority complex about this dude that yeah. you keep wanting me to somehow give this man praise over a dude that the Cowboys had yep. picked second. People can't even remember who they took first in the, in the fourth round. Charles Tapper, by the way, at Oklahoma. Um, you guys have the problem. And lo and behold, like like they do all athletes, they they chewed up, they chewed him up, spit the boy out, <laughs> ran him off. Well, he didn't help. <laughs> he he didn't have his own cause. You know, he he couldn't he couldn't live up to it. Right. He could he could not live up to it. But um, this sense of trying to find this rocky fictional quarterback character. Uh, but again, Jalen fits that. That's what I'm saying. He's he an does. underdog. He wasn't given anything. He was not promised he's, that he's job no when he was stallion, drafted. Apparently. Huh? He's no Italian stallion. Apparently. Exactly. But he was not. But I mean, he fits the, the image. He was not drafted. I mean, people forget. He was. He, he was. John, Carlin, Carson Wentz was the quarterback. Yes. Jalen Hurts was not drafted to be the franchise quarterback. He was, he was not drafted like to be that. the starter. He was drafted to be the backup. You know, and and to he's him insurance. to overcome all that and, and and be a savior in that franchise, take him to the Super Bowl to 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 do that is just crazy to me. He's a true coach's kid. You can tell just listening to him talk, listening to how he manages a game. Um, he's he's really smart between the years and all the stuff that happens outside of that facility and all the noise that we hear and we. Talk talk about and we're able to you know discuss it doesn't get in his head and I think that's what makes him so special for that city specifically uh he's he's built for that conference now, now yeah, all I that be- give him credit for that now, now all that being said I don't think he's playing as well as he did last year well, see, the, he certainly hurt I was gonna say the point yeah. if David Carr just said hey they need to sit him down because he's not healthy and he can't run his run the ball and he can't play his game you could disagree with it but at least you could say oh okay for Mariota but then, to, but to imply they can't read defenses yeah. when he's obviously one of the top quarterbacks in the league is just stupid. Yeah, yeah. What, what defense has David Carr read? Well, it's not even seventy-one picks in what, like six years, seven years, I think. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's wild. It's wild. But you're also talking about a guy right now. You look at the Vegas odds. He's top three in the MVP. Yeah. Um, the odds for the MVP. So, on a team with it, the best record. Yeah, which is that's that's the stuff that makes me scratch truly scratch my head. Of what what are you watching? And what are you expecting? I mean, Jalen Hurts is is everything that you look for in a young man. Yeah, you're to represent your franchise, and and it's, it's 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 wild to me. But at the same time, I I I go back to something Howard Cosell once said about the jockocracy of television. They just put too many guys who play ball in the booth, and what are we really getting? And we are getting some takes that are just not even intelligent and well thought out. And them leaning back on the, well, I played and you didn't play. Yeah. Um, I don't need to play to sit up here and have a just common knowledge that Jalen Hurts is a really good quarterback. And the Eagles this year, overall, they're not as good as they were last year, even though the record says differently. It has hurt losing those two coordinators, and my goodness gracious, those two coordinators have done a really nice job at their head coaches, coaching spots in Arizona and, and, and with the Colts, better than I thought they were. They were some really good coaches. And there has been an adjustment period for, for Brian Johnson and, and Jalen Hurts, but this is still a good football team. But this is this is the disrespect that we, we, we see out of, out of some of these media members. I'm just really surprised. And I think I, I'm a big Jalen Hurts fan. Um I'm looking forward to Dak versus Hurts this weekend. Right, right. Um, this is this is why we tune in. This is why I expect this NBC game to do great numbers. Oh, this is going to be a top three nice most plug. watched. <laughs> sorry, NBC Five. <laughs> I see that. You see that plug? That shameless plug. <laughs> hey man, we get three games a year on NBC Five. You know this. Um, <laughs> So, so, it should be y'all, got a, y'all got a special, you got a big, big special going before the game. Um, yeah, I'll special be, report. I'll, Tony Dungy and I'll get together. Okay, do a little, little something, okay. something on the field. Or Rodney Harrison, but most likely Coach. No, but in this thing is like the David Carr thing is funny because I know you, you do the the players lounge and and, and I rail against it all the time because player you never played the game. How you, just because you played the game, don't mean you know what you're talking about. We need to stop that whole narrative, okay? That only players know what's going on and can have a comment opinion on the NFL. Stop it. Well, players can also say stupid stuff. Too. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that, that's it. You can say some really stupid Shady, stuff. Shady, McCoy. And uh, oh, uh, that, 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 that whole network is sustained <laughs> right on, on point there. And it ain't just the former players. And, right, right, right. and Mr. Vaseline, Baby Oil, and, and, oh, hey, and whoa, um, whoa, whoa. your boy in San Francisco, oh, yeah. the former Buckeye. You know, we got into it earlier this year. Yes. Your Buckeye, yes. Dante. 
Yes, Dante Whitner. Oh, we don't claim him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm just saying. Well, he claiming you. <laughs> yeah, he is your boy, my buck guy. He, he don't, he don't know what the tuck he talking about. He is out here claiming you. All right, when we come back, um, obviously you talked to Dak Prescott in the locker room. Let's dive into something. I, want to see, I didn't get a chance to talk to us doing the other podcast, but something I'm, I am wondering about, uh, Dak and this stretch run coming up here, if you had a chance to talk to him next. We'll do that. Uh, coming up with Jacques Taylor, Nick Harris, that's Claire Till. I'm Newey Scruggs. Media Mash right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Media Mash. <laughs> it be your own people. <laughs> it certainly does. It certainly does. But it's your own ones. Uh, Jacques Taylor, Mick Harris, Clarence Hill, Nui Scruggs. Dak Prescott is currently, according to Vegas odds, the co MVP leader with. Brock Purdy. Dak now has the following games the rest of the season that really, in my opinion, can set the stage for him to, to, to win an MVP. Philadelphia at home on NBC. That's this Sunday. Then it's going on the road to Buffalo. CBS is going to make that their game of the week. I'll be there. Okay, there you go. Cowboys at Buffalo. Then it is a Christmas Eve game at a Hard Rock Stadium against Miami, a team that is going to put up a lot of points. And then you get the Detroit Lions at home on December 30th. It should be a national holiday, December 30th, a great day. Um, and then they close out the season against the Commandos. And we'll, we'll see if that matters. The Commodores? The Commandos. I thought it was Commanders. That's what uh, uh, Bomani Jones the Commodores. But that's what and the fact the that I was like, oh, have I been saying it wrong? The Commandos. That's how irrelevant they are. Uh, yes. So, in my opinion, the opportunity – to win the MVP is there, especially if he can close out the show and have a, a nice touchdown to interception ratio. Your thoughts on that, Nick? Yeah, I think it's very warranted. You look at how he's played since that loss to San Francisco and the way that he's gotten weapons involved, uh, game management, using his mobility, I think has been the biggest thing that's allowed all of that. Uh, it, it's It's been fantastic. And typically the, the MVP, it's a numbers award and it's a quarterback award, and he's he checks both of those boxes so far. Uh, it kind of bothers me that guys like Tyreek Hill and Christian McCaffrey aren't more involved in this discussion. But, you know, Brock Purdy has also had a you know a good year as well, and he's, he's been able to distribute to his weapons as well. But I think when you look at it on paper and, and what – the, the the certain candidates have had to overcome this season. I think Dak Prescott's your favorite. Well, you don't have to debate it, and you know, you just can go play the games. It's there for you to to go get it. It, it doesn't have to be a conversation, but you got to play well and you got to win. 
And if they do those things, then MVP will take care of itself. Yeah, that's one thing I said a few weeks ago when it just started bubbling up. I said that we don't have you don't have to campaign for Dak. If, exactly. if Dak if Dak runs through this gauntlet, yeah. if he beats Philadelphia, navigates Buffalo and Miami, he's gonna win the award because of all the attention the Cowboys get. His game's gonna be on TV. It's gonna be too much, and he's placed one again. No quarterback is playing better than Dak Prescott right now. None. Not nobody, not Brock Purdy, not nobody's playing, but not Patrick Mahomes. No one's played better than Dak Prescott at this current moment. I understand the sentiment for Tyreek Hill, but he's a receiver. In his greatest season he's having, he does not impact the game, play in and play out like a quarterback. You not, you shouldn't give it to a receiver and a quarterback. And they have a nice award for him. It's called the Offensive Player of the Year. That's the award he should win. He's <laughs> going to be McCaffrey. the Offensive Player of the Year. Hammer McCaffrey. Tyreek. Yes, either way. That they have a nice award for him, but the quarterback has to deal with so much with the protection. You talked in, in the Aaron Rodgers talked about last week how Dak is playing the quarterback position. See, a lot of people don't understand the calls he's making, how he, what, what he's doing in the line, the protection. He's playing the quarterback position. He's just not putting up numbers. He's just not, you know, Nothing. running a scheme. He's playing the system. He's playing great football right now. And again, if he navigates these next few weeks, it's a no brainer. Looking at the the schedule, because that's you know, let's face it. The Cowboys play a lot of games that are prime time or or those those afternoon those afternoon games. So we already know NBC Sunday Night Football. That's what they've got coming up this week. Then that Bills game um, on on Sunday the seventeenth. That's a three twenty five game, and that game is going to be actually on Fox. And the other three is o'clock. It be Fox. Yes. See, you see. Let me see. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yeah, Tim. So the Cowboys lied to us in Carolina. They did. They said that You're was right. the last game You're on Fox. Right. Right. <laughs> they lied to us again. The reason we got this is the last game on Fox. We had to do it on Fox. Maybe Carolina's ownership was a little bit nicer than Buffalo's. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina's ownership wasn't nice. They didn't want to deal exactly. Okay, let's be honest exactly. about that. Carolina so I'm just they, saying, they, let's they they pull back the curtain. They lied. How you know they lied? Their lips are moving. Hey, they're trying to get as many, <laughs> as many eyeballs on that game. So, that only so that, that's shooting. our last game on Fox. That's what we had to do at this time. Lies. And so CBS <laughs> has two afternoon games in 3 o'clock hours, the 49ers and Cardinals, and it's the Commanders and the Rams. So we know that's going to be a whole lot of coverage that Dak Prescott the, gets. The Miami game is where? where and then the Miami. I'm moving down the list here. Okay, uh, the Miami game is going to be that Sunday on Christmas Eve in the 324 slot. 325 also on Fox. On Fox. <laughs> and the other 3 o'clock game in that time is Jags and Bucks on exactly. CBS. Exactly. And then the Bears and Cardinals on CBS. Exactly. Then um, December tw- uh, 30th, yeah. that's, a, that's the only game on Saturday. That's going to be on uh, the only game. A, the only game, ABC, ESPN, Lions and Cowboys on December 30th, the only game. So when I say, as you said, he doesn't have to campaign for no, it. It's there. But, but it's right there. Yeah. And the eyeballs will be right there. So for the folks who are doing the vote, I believe it's 50 guys that vote on the MVP, correct? I'm sure on that. You guys what is that? Is it 50 voters on the MVP? I don't know what the number is, but yeah. I believe it's, it's like 50. Yeah. But, th- but the opportunity is there for him. And. And, and and I get the Brock Purdy stuff, but I, I'm sorry. Um, you saw what the 49ers were without Debo Samuel yep. and, and Trent Williams. And Trent Williams. And, 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 and when, when, when Chris McCaffrey got hurt. I mean, Dak is doing more to help the Cowboys win. Brock Purdy's been up great numbers, playing great football. But when it's talking about what you're doing to contribute to wins and losses, Dak is doing more. I mean, Debo's taking – I mean, look 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 at the – last week he passed for 300 and. 14 yards or 313 yards, 214 was run out the catch. Out of 313 yards, 214 was run after catch. Sounds like some Bo Nix lines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Run after catch. That's Debo taking a five yard pass. He only had four attempts over 14 yards, only one was completed. So he's, you know, th- these guys are doing that. All right. Let's do it again tomorrow. Nick, I know you're out tomorrow, man. As always, we all, I'm gonna oh, try. Oh, oh, get your, Wait, get the trivia, though. Get the trivia before you oh, don't man, leave without the trivia. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're hit right. Him, hit no, him. I didn't have anything this week. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, you, no, I didn't. Why well, you that, sold it? You that, sold. Okay. Y'all sold some no, wolf no, tickets no, that old folks say. Watch, watch, watch <laughs> this. Watch this. Watch this. The Arizona Cowboy game, the offensive lineman, the starters. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh my God. You were watching. I appreciate that. Can y'all name all five starting offensive linemen in that Cardinals game? You got the, for the you Cowboys? Got, you got the practice squad roster? <laughs> <laughs> Left tackle. 
Yeah. Left tackle was uh, Iboga. Iboga. <laughs> Idoga. Idoga. Ebola. Oh, Ebola. Ebola. Idoga. Come on now. He's been good. He's been good. Left tackle was Idoga. Okay. He played at UNC. I know. Left guard was uh, left guard. Was uh, obviously Tyler. Tyler. Yep. Center. Uh, center was uh, T.J. Watt. No, the backup center. Um, <laughs> T.J. Ross. No, it's uh, what's his name? I said if I had to practice squad. It's not T.J. Bass. It, that's what I'm thinking it's about. It's not T.J. Bass. He was the guard then. It was the backup center. It's been a backup center since the start of the season. Brock Hoffman. Bro, yeah, Hoffman. Yeah. Right that's guard. Right. right guard. T.J. Bass. And then right tackle. Yeah. There's our trivia. Let's go. That's good. Why is that trivia? That's good. That's good. Why is that trivia? That's because it's trivia. The real trivia. I said it was. That's the end of the show. Actually, actually, Nate Newton was at left tackle. (laughs) Now, the real trivia is the fact that the Arizona game is going to bite the Cowboys in the butt. We end up tied with the Eagles. It is. Because the Eagles lost to the Jets, Jets, Mm -hmm. which is a non-conference game. That conference loss will hurt them in tiebreakers. Honestly, the tiebreaker that, let's say Dallas wins on Sunday, the thing that they have to be rooting for the most is the Eagles to drop one of those two games. So the yeah, Jets. they have to drop one. If they if end up tied, those are, you know, that's, yeah, that's what you need. If they end up tied, they both of them went out. The Cowboys, that that Arizona game is going to bite them in the butt. So where would you rather go to for the playoff game if that's uh, Philly? happening? Philly? Um, no, no, I want to go to Atlanta. Atlanta or New Orleans? <laughs> Tampa Bay. Atlanta? <laughs> Tampa Bay. We ain't going back to Tampa. It'll be, it'll be Atlanta or New Orleans. <laughs> I, I, I like all three of those options, though. I, I got do, people I in all three. We know why you want to go to Atlanta. <laughs> I like all three. Yeah, my boy D. Lid is that. I like, I like all three of those options: Atlanta, New Orleans, Tampa. Clancy. Selfishly, New Orleans. Realistically, Tampa Bay. No man, plans will take you to Magic City. I don't. I, only for the wings, baby. Only for lemon the wings. Pepper, the lemon pepper, you'll lemon get the Blue Williams specials. Yeah, lemon pepper sir, wings. Sir. Only go for the wings. They, they know this man. They know this man. We all getting in. Okay, Clarence Hill. <laughs> They're following me on Twitter. <laughs> JT. I'm Newey Scruggs. The media mash. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!